Hello there you gorgeous human being you, I'm Chris from Techspert and today's lovely wee video is all about this here Honor Magic 6 Lite. It's a fresh new mid-range mobile sport and a standout vegan leather design complete with ultra bounce technology. You've got a punchy 6.78 inch AMOLED display, Snapdragon 6 Gen 1 performance, a 108 meg main camera, all kinds of clever tech. So I'm going to start with an unboxing and see exactly what you get packed in there, which given the size of the box, I'm guessing is not much. And then through the magical powers of video editing, we'll whip forward in time a week, during which time I'll use the Honor Magic 6 Lite as my full-time phone so I can deliver my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So what is stuffed inside of that box besides, of course, the Honor Magic 6 Lite? Well, perhaps unsurprisingly, bugger all besides a USB cable and a pokey sim pin thing, and that's basically it. There you go, that was bloody easy. Ooh, all right, welcome to the future. One week later, and I've had my sim slapped inside the Honor Magic 6 like that entire time. And so what do I reckon? Well, let's start with the design. And like most modern mobiles, this is an absolutely freaking massive git. 6.78 inches, which seems to be the new smartphone standard. Although, hey, at least Honor has managed to slim down those bezels so the Magic 6 Lite doesn't feel even more cumbersome. That's helped along by the curved design. As you can see there, the edges of the screen just slope away. And that is a design that's proven very popular around mid-range marvels like this, while most premium flagship smartphones revert back to a completely flat display. The good news is I've had absolutely zero issues with palm intrusion or my fingers straying accidentally onto that screen while I've been using this phone. Even when I'm clutching it rather tight, you can still poke and prod away, no issues with responsiveness. And also the Honor Magic 6 Lite lives up to its name by only weighing 185 grams, which is pretty impressive for a smartphone of this size. As you can see there, it's reasonably skinny. It's overall pretty slick design, as long as of course you don't mind the old slopey edge shenanigans. Sadly, it is just a plastic frame stretching around the edge of the Honor Magic 6 Lite, which somewhat cheapens the design. But then around back, you've got this stunning fake leather arse, which really stands out. Certainly attracted quite a few comments this past week, most of them positive. Gotta say, I rather like it, especially in this sunrise orange finish, which looks rather bright and bold and lovely. But if that's not your bag, you can also grab the Magic 6 Lite in emerald green or something black infinite black stargazy black the color of my soul black and i also really appreciate how that massive camera bump doesn't actually jut that far from the surface so there's zero wiggling or indeed jiggling when you're using this thing and apparently it's not gorilla glass protecting that screen but in honor's own words you get an ultra bounce anti-drop display which apparently can survive accidental drops of up to 1.5 meters, which is pretty impressive stuff. Not sure if the phone would actually bounce if I was to drop it from head height. I'm certainly not gonna test that out just in case. And you do also have a pre-installed screen protector slapped on here, which soaks up any scratches and other bits. So even after a full week of being slapped about and generally treated not very well indeed, the Magic 6 Lite still looks pristine. As for water resistance, well, the Honor Magic 6 Lite is merely IP53 splash resistance, or absolutely fine if you find yourself caught in a bit of a rainstorm, but I certainly wouldn't take it into a jacuzzi or a shower or something like that. Now, as always with Honor smartphones, you've got the Magic OS launcher slapped on top of Android. Unfortunately, it is Android version 13. And Honor isn't exactly the best around when it comes to updating their smartphones, so I wouldn't expect Android 14 anytime soon. And as for how many OS and security updates you'll get, well, probably not a massive amount. Let's just put it that way. In fact, gripe mode activated because it's the software side of things where I generally don't get on with Honor smartphones. But just little irritations like you can't drag down the notifications bar from anywhere. You just get the global search. You have to stretch all the way up to the top of this massive bloody blower. You get the usual crapware stuffed on here as well, although nothing too terrible. Just the likes of Booking.com, likes of Facebook as well, which thankfully you can just tell to piss off. And off it buggers without a fuss. And that yo-yo assistant actually about as helpful as a grumpy 14-year-old work experience kid. And best off directing your queries at an actual yo-yo. And also Honor's game manager tool isn't quite as fully featured or as helpful as the alternatives you'll find on some other phones. It's a bit basic overall, although at least it's got a do not disturb mode and you can change up the performance between balanced and game. 
Still absolutely bugger all complaints with that in-display optical fingerprint sensor. This has been working perfectly the entire week. Even when my hands have been quite damp after just washing them, it hasn't buggered it up. And that face unlock is a reliable alternative, even when you're stood in near darkness. Only takes a couple of seconds to recognize your mug, helped by the fact that it lights up the entire screen really brightly to illuminate your mug. And kudos to Honor for chucking 256 gigs of storage onto the Magic 6 Lite, where many premium flagships only offer half as much as standard, although as usual, not expandable via micro SD. Now for the display tech slapped here on the Honor Magic 6 Lite, well, Honor has gone bigger and brighter than last year's model. It's a 6.78 inch AMOLED and I've really enjoyed kicking back with a bit of Netflix, Disney Plus, whatever, on this bright, poppy, spacious display. Got a 1.5K resolution, 2652 by 1200 pixels. So even though it's quite a sizable screen, those visuals remain gorgeously crisp. You can tweak those tones in the display settings, but I liked the default vivid mode. Meant those colors really popped, especially when you're relaxing with a bit of anime or whatever. And that's helped along by the fact that that display is pretty bright as well, tops off well over a thousand nits. So certainly no issues with outdoor visibility, even if it was quite sunny, which I kind of had to use my imagination a bit there. And like most phones these days, the refresh rate maxes out at 120 hertz. Although it's certainly not LTPO tech, it can basically switch between 60 and 120, either automatically or you can manually switch it up. Unfortunately, when it comes to the audio, the Magic 6 Lite doesn't impress quite as hard. See, what you got slapped on here is a basic mono speaker setup. It's just that single bottom fire and blaster right here. And while it's pretty loud on that top volume, the audio quality is less than fantastic. Hey, so it's that annoying holiday limbo time where you're stuck between Christmas and New Year and everyone feels both hungover and bloated, like an overflowing sack of feces and offal that's slowly been kicked to death by a bunch of grinchy elves. It makes me sound even worse than I usually do. So yeah, I almost always just tuck up a pair of Bluetooth headphones to the Honor Magic 6 Lite if I want to watch a video, enjoy some music, obviously. And it's just as well that the Bluetooth works really well on this thing because there's bugger all headphone jack action. So let's have a bit of a shuffle onto the performance here on the Magic 6 Lite, which is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 6 Gen 1 chipset. And that's back to my review model by 8 gigs of RAM. And thankfully, the everyday performance has been absolutely fine this past week. I have had a few apps lock up on me. In fact, Google Docs still absolutely hates life on this thing to the point where I practically can't use it. But hopefully that's just an early software bug as opposed to a performance issue. After all, I am using the Magic 6 Lite ahead of its official launch. I have found that the camera app can run a wee bit slow as well, especially if you're taking like a portrait shot or something like that. Every time you hit that shutter button, the phone can basically just sort of lock up for a couple of seconds while it's processing the image thinks about it really bloody hard. And the really good news is that the Magic 6 Lite can handle gaming better than I expected. Even the mighty Genshin Impact can run on this thing, although I would scale down the graphics from those higher settings because it really doesn't like it too much. So quite a few significant frame drops when the visual details were on the highest settings. It definitely runs a bit better on medium graphics. And while the back end of the Honor Magic 6 Lite got a little bit warm to the touch after just 20-30 minutes of gaming, thankfully there was no throttling and it didn't heat up any worse than that. So overall, pretty solid performance here on the Honor Magic 6 Lite and bugger all complaints when it comes to the battery life as well. In fact, the Honor Magic 6 Lite absolutely smashes it. That battery capacity has increased over last year's model, so now you've got a 5,300 milliamp hour cell stuffed in here. And that'll give you two days of life quite happily, even with plenty of screen on time. I found I generally got around sort of nine to ten hours of mixed use before I finally managed to drain this bloody thing. So it'll certainly last you a long intensive day, even with plenty of gaming, plenty of camera use, all of that good stuff. Unfortunately, when you do finally drain it, the Magic 6 Lite, not quite as impressive there. You've got 35 watt charging when you bung a cable in its bottom. That's actually slower than the Magic 5 Lite from last year, which supported 40 watt wired charging. And as usual, no love whatsoever for the old wireless charging. So let's finish up this lovely wee on a Magic 6 Lite review with a squint at the camera tech. And the star of the show here is a 108 megapixel primary sensor. The camera app here boasts all of the usual features that you would expect, the likes of the portrait mode, the night mode. If you flip across into more, you've got tons of other bits to play around with, including a full-on pro mode. 
Though this is quite basic again compared with some rivals, no ability to shoot in raw format for instance. And yep, there's also a high res mode if you want to shoot at the full 108 megapixels. Otherwise, on full auto mode, you get a bit of 9 in 1 pixel binning. So you will end up with a lower resolution photo, but it helps to brighten up the image when the conditions are a bit dim. On the whole, that photo quality hasn't improved much over the previous generation. Overall, it is good enough for everyday snaps, but the Magic 6 Lite sometimes struggles with more vibrant colours. Portrait shots come out well though with a more subtle approach to bokeh that still helps to highlight your subject. And while that high res mode does improve the clarity slightly versus just cropping into a regular auto photo, I found I actually got sharper results by digitally zooming in that auto mode, up to 8 times in total. And when you're shooting in more ambient light, detail levels can drop sharply. Check out the noisy results with this one, while colours are also quite tempered as in any kind of movement and the results will be a blurry sack of bollocks. But the night mode has a serious impact, turning a murky mess into potentially something workable, again as long as everything keeps still. As for the other two lenses slapped on the Magic 6 Lite, well I wouldn't get too excited that's for sure, you got a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter which is pretty basic stuff, and there's certainly no telephoto shooter on here, if you do tap 3 times that just does a bit of digital zoom. That final lens is actually just some 2 megapixel macro bollocks which you know, just don't even bother. And for your video requirements, well you can shoot footage at up to 4K resolution as you can see there. Though your frame rate is limited to just 30 frames per second if you do bump it up to Ultra HD resolution. And I was happy enough with most of my video clips which I shot at 4K resolution. The focus is fast and smart enough so you rarely have to manually take over. And those visuals are sharp enough too while audio is cleanly captured both in front of and behind of the lens. However, stabilisation could be better as there is obvious hand tremors even when you're just stood still, while I also saw a couple of jar and frame rate judders when shooting longer clips. And then finally up front you've got yourself a 16 megapixel selfie shooter which is pretty respectable. Even in more ambient light and at night time this can help to highlight your mug with a bright screen border which thankfully also doesn't absolutely blind you. And that right there, my lovelies, is what I reckon of the Honor Magic 6 Lite after using it as my full-time smartphone for just over a week. The biggest grumble, definitely the software side of things. On the whole, I got on really well with the hardware. You know, minor grumbles aside, the likes of the mono speaker setup. But apart from that, strong media chops you've got, you know, good bit of performance there, excellent battery life. So that's what I reckon anyway. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Honor Magic 6 Lite down below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.